All right. Let's continue with the word of the Messiah. These curses going over the law. We in Deuteronomy 28 and 27. Say the Most High will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the hemorrhoids and with the scab and with the itch whereof thou cannot be healed. So let's look at um, how he said the same deal with hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids and with the scab. Look at the scab. Go to uh, Isaiah the third chapter and Let's look at verse 16. Isaiah 3, 16. Moreover, the, the Most High said, well, the Most High said, because the daughters of Zion, this our women, are haunting, prideful, and walk with stretched forth necks. You know how y'all be doing y'all necks, moving y'all necks around. And wanting eyes. Walking and missing as they go, walking and switching as they go, and making a tingling with their feet because they got them ankle bracelets on. Therefore, the Most High will smite with a scab. As he said in his curses, he will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Most High will discover their secret parts. So he's saying he's gonna, he gonna smite with a scab. The crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. So that's that scab that he promised he was going to do to us because of disobedience. The scab of the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion and the Most High will discover their secret parts. Jump down to verse 24. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. That's how you discover your secret parts. As is written, and, it's, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, where you should smell sweet, there shall be stink. And you're going to tell me that you smell good on them ships. When the captivity and when you was in slavery, you couldn't do whatever you wanted to do to take care of yourself. So it says instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-said hair, well, y'all had hair going all the way down to the floor. Can you imagine an afro going all the way down your back? Not just stopping at the shoulders, but going all the way down. You had hair like that, so I say, well, say, hey, have a picture of uh, our forefather Jacob in Syria had a big old afro. It says, instead of a girdle of rent. Let's read from the top. Verse 24. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well set hair, baldness. That's that scab he's talking about. Baldness. No matter how you look at it, how your hair looks now, it was nothing compared to where your hair was. And instead of a stomacher, a, gird, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. See, and thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. Most, most I told him, say, he gonna do this. For what? For not following his laws, statutes, and commandments. Hello, y'all yeah, to his holy name, about some of shall be all shot. But we as a people, we find ways to justify and say, they ain't talking about me. That's because you're individualists. But you look at what happened to our people as a nation. You say, your men going to die in the war. Just fighting to try and not go into captivity, slavery, and bondage. Whereas you look at you going into slavery and bondage, butt naked, on them ships, in captivity in them huts. You got a bucket of water. I remember someone was telling me they used to take a bath, had a one barrel, dip you in that water, soak you up, dip you back in that water, you come out, that's your bath. 
next, dip you up into that water, fuck you up, that's it. Mean all the luxuries that you have now. So going back to Deuteronomy 28, and you see the man was killed. Killed the men, he just did that to the women, but he killed us as men. Because we the head, we supposed to know better. Do every 28, 28. The most I shall smite thee with madness and blindness and establishment of heart. See, so he smit us with madness and blindness, can't see. Like we supposed to see, that's why I said we destroy for lack of knowledge. And astonishment of heart, astonishment of mind. Don't know if you're coming or going. Don't have a clue. And the only thing you have to do is follow up. Your surroundings, all that you're not, you're not hip. You're not in. But where you get your being in from? The world. The world said you gotta be like this, so it's people that say the world gonna say, oh, something's wrong with you because you're different. But they are the world. Look at um, Jeremiah the fourth chapter. Verse 9, it says, And it shall come to pass at that day, said the Most High, that the heart of the king shall perish. Mind the king gonna perish. In the heart of the princes, heart of the princes, the mind of the princes shall perish. And the priest shall be astonished. And the prophets shall wonder, what's going on? Why has this happened to us? We read about it why it's happened to them. And to, until this day, then said I, oh, most high power, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, ye shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches unto the soul. At that time shall it be said to this people, and to Jerusalem, a dry wind of the high places of, of wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not the fan nor the cleanse. Even a full wind from those places shall come upon me. Now also will I give sentence against them. So, behold, he cometh, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, just deliver us, destruction unto us, just get ready to happen to us, for we are spoiled. We say, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart, wash your mind from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? See? That's how we are. That's why Ecclesiastes 3 24 says, For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion to overthrow their judgment. Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Most High with all thine heart. So we won't trust in our own heart. But he said, trust in the Most High with all thine heart, all your mind, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Because you allow Satan to come in and direct your paths. But a lot of you walk around evil as ever and don't even realize it because you used to Satan being in you. The devil being in you. Like people do heinous crime and say, why did you do it? The devil made me do it. Because the devil's in them. The devil in a lot of people. That's why he said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. But see, you ain't acknowledging the most high then. How are you directing your path? Your path is, is an evil suspicion overthrowing the judge. You allow evil to come in and dictate how you're supposed to operate. And you don't realize it because you've been dealing with Satan. You've been dealing with the devil. That's why it says, Deuteronomy 28, 28, the most I shall smite thee with madness. So people are mad. Off the chain. 
and blindness. They can't see. See? That's why Paul had to go to the Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind, like some of you out there. If you haven't come to the knowledge of Muslim understanding that you are an Israelite, you have Negro, primary Negro, Indian, and Latino descent here in America, this Western Hemisphere, but we scattered all over the world. I'll say the indigenous ones, because a lot of you are not Israel. All Israel not of Israel. So when this don't fit your spirit, then you a Gentile. You still a Gentile. You know, Mashiach of Shai comes to judge and make war against these heathen nations who you claim to be. So you're only going to be who you are. You can't say, oh, well, I'm, I'm an Israelite. Now that you see that he's coming to deliver the Israelites, you realize it's too late. You don't refuse the wonderful gospel of the Most High's word. It's good news. You can't wait till the last minute to say, oh, now I'm going to be who I really am. No, nah, be who you are. Continue to do what you've been doing. You know? is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the vine of the of soul and spirit to the marrow of the bone. That's why he told us, uh, go to Revelation 22 and 11, this is the last book of the Bible. All you that say you're going to change in the last minute, you're going to get it together before, you don't even know if you're going to die before this time. He said, listen to what he said. Well, it's 22, 11. He that is unjust, you that is unjust, he that is unrighteous, let him be unjust still. He tell you, you got to stay that way. Stay that way. And he which is filthy, you that is filthy out there, let him be filthy still. Stay filthy. Thus said the Most High, and the Mashiach got a shot. And he that is righteous, you that's following the law, such commandments of the Most High, having faith in the Mashiach of Shai, having fear of the Most High, crying to the Most High. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. He said, and behold, I come quickly. When he come, the Most High said, the Mashiach of Shai, he will come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his works shall be. What you have done in these mortal bodies. He gonna judge you for it. So I say verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. That's our planet. So it's planet. It's prepared already. The tree of life is for us to live forever. It may enter in through the gates into the city. The gates, you got four gates. You got three gates on the north, three gates on the south, three gates on the west, three gates on the east. Which makes up 12 tribes of Israel, three tribes on the each gate. North, south, and east, and west. Which make up the 12 tribes that's going into those gates of Israel, not no other, other nation, nobody else. As I say, you're going to be able to enter into the gates, into the city, to New Jerusalem. That's coming down. That's already prepared. Just waiting on us to get ourselves together. Listen, for without, like all those that are blind and in madness and can't see, as he said, are dogs and dogs, I looked it up in the Uncle's Bible Dictionary, it says dogs was used by the Israelites concerning their Gentiles because of their profaneness and because of homosexuality. So without are dogs, and Mashiach said in Psalm 22 and 16, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. 
For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh for life. You ain't gonna be in the kingdom. If you fit into any of those categories, that's why you gotta change. Going back to Deuteronomy 28. And 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday. As the blind grope in darkness. So you're gonna grope at noonday as the blind grow up in darkness. You're gonna see darkness. The mist is gonna be shot. All you're gonna see is you ain't gonna see no, no daylight, you're gonna see no sun, you're gonna see moon, you're gonna see nothing. You're gonna grow up at noonday. Noonday come as it's gonna be as the blind man grow up in darkness, you're gonna see darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy way, so you ain't gonna prosper in the things that you're trying to do. Because of not following the law, such commands of the Most High. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. You're going to be oppressed and spoiled evermore. Robbed from everything you got. Every time you get paid, it's got to go out. And oppressed evermore. And no man shall save you. You hear that? No man going to save us. So you hear people talking about you need to come here and do this with them. Ain't no man going to save us. Because our people, when they say that, all you leaders, you think that they not really uplifting you, but they uplifting you. They look for you to come through and do what it is that the Most High say he's going to do or not do. Now you become the Most High and the Most High, they depend on you. I don't witness it. I'm praying the brother, praying the mother, brother's name in the, in the prayer. With witnesses. So no, ain't no man going to save us. Get that out of your mind. The most I ain't gave it to no one man. We know in part, we prophesy in part. Well, I challenge whoever, whatever man out there to say, you got it all. And you believe it, I'm not sure I got with shots, so therefore you cancel him out. So you say it'll take a thousand years to show us other father. Are you showing your people of the most high now? When well, you don't need him? Then you should be able to deal with the most high. Come out of your body and go right to the throne of the Most High. You can't do that. You need to be quiet, humble yourself, and realize you Mashiachim. You the anointest. You ain't going to the Most High on your own without Him. Right? Or you confess Him. You confessing Israel more than you is the Mashiach And the Most High. Hear the word of the Most High. That's why we're in the condition we're in. And you can know all that you want to know. But you don't know who the Most High has sent on this earth, the destroyer, hanging out with Micah, our little archangel of war. Ready to come and judge and make war. And you ain't his sheep. And you just said his sheep know him. Ain't nobody gonna be able to pluck them out of his hand because Mosai who gave his sheep to a Mashiach, God was shy. Ain't nobody ever pluck them out of Most High's hand. There was a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. So if you ain't pushing him, you pushing yourself. I tell you, ain't no man gonna save you, people. No man. We know in part of prophesying father. Nobody have it all. He ain't gonna give it to everyone. Matter of fact, no one, you know, all your people bragging about this, that, and the third, you ain't got it. You ain't got nothing compared to what we gonna see. We live in a concrete jungle. <laughs> Most sides stricken you where well, you can't even speak no more. Give you a stroke. Not to say that, you know, I wish anything of that to happen, but these are realities that have happened to our people. Give you a heart attack. Any of us, including myself, I'm not trying to be out there like that. It's 
real, man. Ain't no man gonna save us. Believe that. People get caught up in men. That's so you know, men let them down and they fall out. Because they were never really grounded in the foundation of a Masiach Yahushai that they should have been to continue to go forward. Nobody, no man going to take me off my course. No woman, no child, nobody. When the Masiach Yahushai called the pause, they went out to do the job. They went to do what they had to do. And they did it. We gotta be there for each other, comfort each other. And not just those that are around you. Most I say he loved Jacob, so he only loved the ones that's around you. The ones that's the only ones that's around me? No. He loved us as a people. I, most I say I love Jacob. You gonna determine who the most I love and who we don't love? But recognize. This serious. This is serious as serious can be, people. And it's getting so close that we never have no choice but to be together. Those that really understand these principles of love, keeping the commandments of the Most High, doing what we've got to do. Deuteronomy 28 and 30. Remember, ain't no man gonna save you. Thou should be trough for wife. So we're gonna get a wife and another man shall lie with her. What happened? We got a wife. Had a wife, baby. When they came here, understand this too. All of us didn't come on those slave ships. Our ancestors didn't come on those slave ships. We was already here on this land in the Western Hemisphere. You better know your story and our story. You look up the Wachita, the Doug Demania. Who was here? Ancient one. Who was here on this land? I have a book called The Ancient One. Show you when Columbus came. I have Columbus narratives in the book, his maps, everything. And when he came here, and when they came, who met him? A black king. A so-called black king, because you know anybody gets covered with it. So-called black king. We have civilizations already here, long before the Europeans ever stepped foot in 1492. And it was taking us off our land and making us slaves. Moving us from place to place. Yeah, you can sail from northern part of this western hemisphere all the way down to Mexico. and Because uh, you got the Pacific Ocean there, don't you? You got the Atlantic Ocean on the other side, don't you? Once they sailed here, they took us off our land and took us to different lands. And sold us right off this land in the Western Hemisphere, indigenous. They own mostly all the land of this America. But see, that's not taught in the history books. Therefore, so many Israelites don't even know anything about that. Better look it up. I did a few lessons on it. Watch it talk to Doug Demania. See it in the end? What's on the end of that? Yah. Most High's name. Yah. So we are his servants. We are his children. We are the ones that this happened to. He said, Be thou shall be trough for wife, and another man shall lie with her. You have your wife, and here come the slave oppressor, and take her from you. They show you that in the movies. You ain't got a 
Imagine this, they show you the movies. Take your woman, go live with her. I'll tell you a good movie I, I looked at uh, recently was The Birth of a Nation. Since I'm talking about watching Tom and Doug Demonia, yeah. When you look at Nat Turner, he was, his family owned this land. He was part of Wachita that owned the land. They took him off the land, made him slaves. So when he was going back, he was just going back getting what was his. We were here on this land. That's why they couldn't hardly whoop the color warriors. Warriors because they knew the land. We knew the land. We was from here. But see, our people, they want to accept what it is that you've been taught in his story. I mean, he's telling you, for real, I mean, the most high so Paul say, that's his story. It's not our story. <laughs> but it's his story. So he done lied. About so many things. To keep you from knowing who you are. And naming us, he named, he named everybody by what he wanted to name us. You know, I got over 75 different names, asking brothers, what's your nationality? What's your race? Come on. That's not destroyed for lack of knowledge. Whereas if you ask us in ancient times, we say, hey, I'm 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 the thou one with a tribe of Judah, for the nation of Israel. You're gonna bring it. You see? You would know. You would know who you were. But here, going all the way back to the Greek Empire, that's what was happening, people. Thou shalt be trough for wife. Another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, thou shalt not dwell therein. Good building houses, these big mansions, these big slave houses, and so forth. We ain't dwell in them. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, you shall not gather the grapes thereof. Plant a vineyard, and not gather the grapes for yourself. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. Thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine own ox. Kill before our eyes. We we'll get none of them ox tails. We we'll get nothing from that ox. We gotta eat swine flesh. Something that they knew was an abomination in the Most High's law. The Leviticus. Another chapter, he knew that we were going to eat swine, so that's why they give us swine. They put swine, this and that and everything. Change the name. That's why the most high know. So the earth is defiled and the habits thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from thee before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Taking everything that we have. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. So our sheep took our sheep, took everything that we have. And they have no one to help to rescue them back to you. Why? Verse 15. Just in case you forgot. And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the most high that power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said he's going to do it. And this will happen to us in due time. Verse 32 Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people sons and daughters given to another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. That they shall be, there shall be no might in thine hand. See, our daughters and our sons were given to another people in slavery. What nation can say this applies to them as we go through all these curses? No one but us. Remember Kizzy wrote that letter in Roots for that young brother to have a past to go like that she could read and write. They found out she wrote that past, you gone. Kuta Kente and his wife crying, running 
Trying to save me. No bite in his hand, just fell down to the ground. Quiet. Kids are gone forever. Never see our sons and daughters. Again. Eyes should fail, longing to, to see them. That's why, you know, you look at where we at now, how blessed you are. But this is what we went through before the blessing that we are now, just to have your daughters and your sons and your daughters. But your sons and daughters belong to whatever state they were born in. Just like you do. If you have a birth certificate, you get your birth certificate that says informant. Your, your mama was the informant. Inform them that another slave is born. Straight up. Look at it, it's an informant. She the snitch. <laughs> That's an informant. You let them know, hey, you go another slave for you. That's another topic. But it says, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. You think I'm lying? You let some out. The city come in, the state come in, they take over, they take your children from you. From little or nothing, no matter, they just had that control. They shouldn't have that control. But we should be able to follow our laws, statute of commandments, as it is written in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. But how are you going to do this if you got a bunch of people that's running around here buck wild, they don't follow this. But we that do follow this should be able to adhere to this when it says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 1. Do any of you having a matter against another go to the law? Therefore, the unjust, you go to the unjust law? You know they're not for us. And not before the saints, and not before the saints. You're going to call a man before you try and have a counsel with the brothers that know this truth. Especially we in this truth. I'm telling you. Do you not know that the saints have judged the world? We got 144,000, man, 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel going to judge the world. And we're rehearsing right now. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. We're going to fulfill what it is that we're going to do. And we're going to take, be taken on a higher level. So we're going to judge the world. And if the world shall be judged by you, are you worthy to judge the smallest matters? The whole world will be judged by the men that the most I have set up in these last days that's going to judge the world. Say, are we unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more the things that pertain to this life? You see, see, we ain't consider the fact of what the most high say. This the law been here. It's the first. Five books in the Bible. It ain't just happened because we're looking at it now. The law always been here. I've been telling you, read the law. Learn the law so you know what's right from wrong. So you got to go over because this one won't read. I mean, seek you out of the book of the most I don't want and read. This one don't want to do it. You want to do it like they want to do it and don't know as, as much as they should know because they try and read but not you read without understanding. Then what's the point? Look at uh, Revelation 1 and 3. Revelation, the first chapter, the third verse. Blessed is he that runneth his mouth. Follow his heart. Do whatever he want to do. What does it say? What does it say? No, it say, blessed is he that readeth. <laughs> And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Blessed is he that readeth. So if you don't read, then you not, how do you expect to be blessed when you don't read? So if you don't read, I mean, curse is he that don't read. Hmm. But well, he said, blessed is he that reads. So if you don't read, you say, hey, you want to keep, keep something from us? What do you do? Put it in the book. Because we don't read. Been programmed not to read. Hate reading, so therefore you cursed. But he said, Blessed is he that read him. So cursed is he that don't read. And you're going to be cursed because what you're going to know? 
You're going to be destroyed for lack of knowledge. You ain't going to know nothing that you should know. Deuteronomy 28 30. God shall be charged for wife, and another man shall lie with her. And they just took our women and lied with them. And you women were just like spoiled. They, every time we had a war, or whatever, they came, got our women, we lost, they came, got the women and the children, and took them away. Even in captivity, you don't have a choice. I mean, we read last night how. Esther, she ain't want to be no king's wife. She ain't want to deal with being his wife, being the queen, and the Persian to be the empire. She would care less. Look, matter of fact, let's go over it. Look at it. Become another. She, he chose her after he got rid of this, 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 this whatever name was, this, 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 whatever name was, Vesti. He got rid of her. He chose Esther. One of the fine sisters of our nation. You know she was beautiful. Gotta see what she said though. Because she she risked her life. She risked her life. And she was one that's like, he said, we trough a wife, another man shall lie with her. The other nations had all, all, all women. But even if it was your wife, in slavery is saying that another man came in and slept with her. Do what Esther said. Go to Esther, the 14th chapter. I like to because it's power. Verse 1. Queen Esther also, being in fear of death, resorted unto the Most High. Because of the king, she went before the king without him calling her, and he did like that with that scepter because she was finished. That's why she was fearing of her life. She didn't know how, what kind of attitude he was going to have when she walked in there. They tell him how Haman was planning on killing all of us, the children of Israel. Listen, and laid away her gorgeous apparel. See that? Glorious apparel. Right. And laid away her glorious apparel. She was the queen. So she laid away her glorious apparel and put on the garment of anguish and mourning. And instead of precious ointments, she covered her head with ashes and dung. Ashes and doo-doo. And she humbled her body greatly. You know she was fine as ever. She put doo-doo and ashes on her head. And humbled her body greatly. And all the places of her joy she filled with her torn hair. She tore her hair off. And she prayed unto the Most High Power of Israel, saying, O oh, my power, thou only art our king. Help me, desolate woman, which have no helper but thee. We don't have a helper but the Most High. For my danger is in mine hand. For my youth up, I have heard in the tribe of my family the Israelite family, that thou, O Most High, took an Israel from among all people, and our fathers from all their predecessors, for a perpetual inheritance, 
thou hast performed whatsoever thou didst promise them. And now we have sinned before thee. You hear that? And now we have sinned before thee. And now we have sinned before thee. See how she includes herself? These are solutions that works. Why do these things happen to us? Because we did not follow the ways of our ancestors, even to this day. Looking at what works and what doesn't work. Listen to what she's saying. Because the end result was just what she prayed for, she got. It. Verse 6, and now we have sinned before thee. Therefore hast thou given us into the hands of our enemies. It's like he said he would do. And these curses. We sinned against the Most High, therefore we were given into the hands of our enemies. Because we worship their gods. Because we worship their idols. In all these different religions and so forth. You worship in their idols. That's why these things are happening to us. You be trying to wife and another man going to lay with her. Because we worship their gods. O Most High, thou art righteous. Nevertheless, it satisfies them not that we are in bitter captivity, that they have stricken hands with their idols, that they will abolish the thing that thou with thy mouth has ordained and destroyed thy inheritance. We the children of Israel. And stop the mouth of them that praise thee. And quench the glory of thy house and of thy altar. And open the mouth of the heathen to set forth the praise of the idols and to magnify a fleshly king forever. Yeah. You know? The, the heathen dealing with idol idolatry. That's why you read Psalm 96 and 5. It says, For all the gods of the nations of the heathen are idols. They worship in a worldly king forever. So you look at kings that set up on this earth, no matter what they call them, they're still kings. They're over the country. People worship in them. More so than the Most High. O Most High, give not thy scepter unto them that be nothing. So don't give your power. To them that be nothing. You got to look at that. Don't give it to them that be nothing. Isaiah 40 and 17. Don't give your power to them. The scepter is power from the authority. Don't give your power to them that be nothing. What do you say? Isaiah 40 17. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Talking about the other nations outside of the Torah tribes of Israel. Verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance before he take up the hour of the very little thing. So go to 2nd Ezra. The 6th chapter, 51st, 54th verse. Now that we know what the most high sin for all nations before him are is nothing that says Second Ezra 6 54. And after these Adam also, whom thou made a master of all thy creatures. All the way back to Adam, of him come we all, because we all come from Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the people who came from Noah, who came from Adam. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Those are the 12 tribes of Israel. The chosen people of the Most High. Deuteronomy 6, uh, 7 and 6, Deuteronomy 14 and 2. All this have I spoken before thee, O Most High, because thou made it the world for our sake. You made the whole world for the 12 tribes of Israel's sake. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. We just read it. For all nations before him are as nothing. 
I would say that they are nothing but be like a to spittle. Add a little bit more to it, but be like unto spittle. Spit, come out of your mouth. And as likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Right. Isaiah 40, 17 to 15 that we just read. So, going back to Esther. And what she's saying here, say, O Most High, verse 11, O Most High, give not thy scepter, which is your power from authority, unto them that are nothing. And let them not laugh at our fall. But turn their devices upon themselves and make him an example that have begun this have begun this against us. Talk about hey, make him an example that has begun this all these things that they're doing against we children of Israel. Remember, O Most High, make thyself known in time of our affliction and give me boldness. O king of the nations and master of all power, give me eloquent speech in my mouth before the lion. Talking about the king, Ahasuerus, that she had to go before him. She turned his heart, turned his mind to hate him that fighteth against us. Just the prayer she praying. All this happened. It came to be. Turn his heart to hate him that fighteth against us, that there may be an end of him, and of all that are like-minded to him, all of them that want to be with him that kill us. But deliver us with thine hand, and help me that I'm desperate, and which have no other helper but thee. The only helper we have is the Most High. Thou knowest all things, O Most High. Thou knowest that I hate the glory of the unrighteous. And I whore, see, I hate the bed of the uncircumcised and of all the heathen. So that's hate right there in her prayer. And she hates being the queen. She hated the bed being have to lay with this uncircumcised king. But that's who she had to lay with. Thou knowest my necessity. For I abhor, I hate the sign of my high estate, which is upon mine head in the days wherein I show myself. And that I abhor, I hate it as a mistress cloth, mistress rag, a coat, a bloody coat. That's how much she hated. And that I wear it not when I am private by myself. I throw it off my head when I'm by myself. I ain't wearing this crown. Said she hated them. That thine handmaid have not eaten at Amos table. I ain't defiled myself with unclean food. And that I have not greatly esteemed the king's feast. I ain't greatly esteemed his feast. I just went through the motions. Nor drunk the wine of the drink offering. Neither had thine handmaid any joy since the day that I was brought hither to this present. So I ain't never had no joy being the queen under this heathen. But in thee, O Most High, power of Abraham, O thou mighty power above all, hear the voice of the forlorn, and deliver us out of the hands of the mischievous. Deliver me out of my fear. So, and she was delivered. And everything that she prayed for that you hear, right? you can read in the book of Esther. Going through Esther, during the ninth and 10th chapter, you'll see that everything she prayed for happened. Haman was killed, his sons was killed, he put, he made gallows, killed Mordecai, and the Israelites, 
was able to kill him one day. And Esther went before the king another day. So let us kill him another day. So we got to kill him two days in a row. So that was favor of the Most High, with the Most High. But here we go back to the curses, Deuteronomy 28. 30, thou shalt be trophy wife, and another man shall lie with her. Came and took all women. We sleep at night, they come in there, I want you to come. Or somebody came out of town, I want that one. That's why I told you, watch that movie, uh, Birth of a Nation, they show you in there. Cat came from out of town, I want that one. She belonged to another man. He had to give her up. Waiting outside for her to, for this Edomite to finish with this woman. She got to come out after she done laid with him, did everything unimaginable. She got to come out to her husband. Hmm. You women, you got to understand, you was in captivity under the Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, Persian and Medes, the Greeks, the Romans. And this, and, and the so-called white man, the Edomites, 1492 on tonight. And I say to now because some people are still being oppressed in slavery, type of conditions, and so forth. Thou shalt be troth for wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. And we build, we built the White House. We built all kind of houses. We didn't dwell in. We dwell in little shacks. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. They shall be no, there shall be no might in thine hand. There will be no strength in our hands to do anything about it. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall be the nation, which thou knowest not, eat up. Thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. The things you see, you're going to be mad, you're going to make us mad, so the most I shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the sore box that cannot be healed. In our knees and our legs, the sore box that cannot be healed. From the sole of thy foot to the top of thy head. Tearing this up. The most I shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt 